Please join me in welcoming this wonderfully incredible cast, Margaret Martindale, Peter Garrity, Shane McRae, and Libé Barrer. Hi. Hey, folks. So I actually, because we were just watching the episode with you guys and you were pointing out one of the most incredible TV scenes that I didn't realize when I first watched it, that early scene where Julia goes into the house and how there's about eight minutes that's all one take. And I was wondering if you guys could just talk us through oh, shooting oh, oh, oh. that. Well, oh, sorry, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> Peter, Peter's falling. The, the uh, chair is falling apart, that's all. That was almost the best thing you ever <laughs> That's what family do. Not for the first time. <laughs> So how, how was the process for rehearsing and mapping out that scene, and how long did it actually take to do that as uh, one take? Well, as Lee Bay said, it took about five hours of rehearsal and one hour of shooting. Yeah. But it was, you know, we're all theater yeah, actors, so it, it comes easily. One to, hour but of shooting? Or it was probably like two hours, but we rehearsed from like <laughs> oh, the I morning. <laughs> we rehearsed that from like the morning until lunch, which was like... And so then it then felt like five and hours. Then we did, and then we didn't get it till after lunch. We so shot if it you count you. lunch, it took all day. <laughs> <laughs> took three weeks. <laughs> yeah, it took three weeks. We finished it last night. But it was on the page. It was like five scenes, and they com we, our amazing director John Avedent, um condensed it into one continuous shot. It was it's fun because it was a giant challenge for all of us. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about Brian Cranston's involvement because I've read that he was very hands-on and very involved early on, and there for a lot of table reads, um, and really a resource for you guys to talk through your characters. What are some of the aspects that we see in your characters now that really came from those conversations and came from Brian early on? For anyone. Somebody else? I just remember Brian as being uh, encouraging uh, whatever spontaneous inventiveness that we could... Uh, Bring. I don't remember anything. I don't remember oh. specifics. I, I have a specific one. Oh, specific. So, well, this in the first season where there were there was the um, uh, I Carly does the rolling of the quarters thing. Uh, that came from that was Brian's idea, and he wrote me being like, "Hey, I'm really excited about this idea." Like it was just written in the script, and he was like, "I'm really excited, and I want it to be Carly's thing, where she rolls the quarter over her knuckles, and it's something that Pete has taught her, and that, and it's also like her sort of into the con world and Pete's world and whatever." <clears throat> and he was like, and then one day I got a call, for, and he was like, you should talk to a specialist about it. And I was like, okay, yeah, thinking maybe someday I'll talk to a specialist about it. And I was like, one day I was like taking a nap, and I was actually sick, and I wake up from a text from Brian's assistant being like, hey, can you come right now to the office to meet with Brian and a magician? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and I like stumbled into a cab, and yeah, so the rolling of the quarter thing, that was Brian. Yeah. And have any of those specialists worked on the show since then with any of you? Or was it really just that one scene? There was a sleight of hand guy, all of that stuff. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in season one, right? Season one, yeah. Season one. There was somebody there, I think, all the time whenever we did card stuff. Uh, and um, I mean, I, I, I remember when Bri Brian directed, I think, uh, episode seven of the first season. And uh, I remember, you know, you come to set and it's Brian Cranston. and. Uh, how specific he was and how he had, I remember him saying, you know, when you walk in the door, there'll be a beat and I want you to look down and then I want you to look up, like right at this one thing. And, it, and I didn't even realize what he wanted until I saw it later and, and saw how effective it was. And that was a real lesson for me, just in sort of what a master he is of the technical, I mean, of all of it, but he just has such an eye for for what the camera needs. So are you going to do that from now on? I have I've been trying. <laughs> it hasn't I mean I you know, we'll see. That's why you it's feel like Paul Newman looking at the thing. <laughs> I always in every scene you'll notice I go. <laughs> I think it'd be good if we did it in unison let's try and do yeah. it. Yeah. It is effective, though, oh, you see? Oh, my goodness. Genius. What a great group. It is the greatest group of actors I've ever worked with. I love these people. Uh, I remember Brian Cranston, though, writing us a letter telling us that any time we wanted to 
get specific in an, a way that, that like he did <laughs> in Breaking Bad, like about uh, about him riding in the truck and hi- and yeah, the, the glove and the glove compartment flying open, and it, it was an annoying thing, but he made it into something that actually actually made a big giant jump in his character by just <laughs> something about uh, I think. Yeah, yeah. It. The and first season of Breaking Bad. I found a way to go do that in something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did. I remember oh, that. Yeah, that did. It Peter, <laughs> I feel like I feel like you somehow work <laughs> into like most of your lines. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the Ezra Charles Rocky Marciano fight. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. That's coming up. I also wanted to ask you guys a little bit about your research process, because obviously when you first come onto a show and you first are creating a character that you're going to play, there's a whole research process in deciding their backstory. But then is that something where you're still researching new things in season three and coming up with new elements of their backstory based on where the story is going and having to pivot anything? Yeah. uh, I remember telling our writer in season one, uh, Graham Yost, I said, what, "What is my, what is my, Yost. what is my backstory?" He said, uh, "A little bit of this, a little bit of that." I said, "Well, come on, you got to give me something more." He said, I, "You know, I'm just giving you this and that, and just do it." And, oh, now I love Graham, uh, and so I wrote my own backstory and I told him what my backstory was. I said that I, um, I was raped by my father, at, <laughs> who was a preacher at 16. And I was put in a psychiatric hospital, <laughs> and then I had a baby by the doctor, uh, and and then I conned my way out of prison that way, <laughs> out of the hospital. And he said, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" <laughs> he said, "No, Margot." <laughs> and then he gave you some more backstory. He gave me some more backstory. <laughs> <laughs> but you can still see elements of I that. Do, I, I do have a little bit of that going on. You can. That explains a lot. How about for the rest of you guys? Was there anything that you remember having to change for your characters? I was like, how can I be a big, kind of dumb looking lug? <laughs> <laughs> it's a oh, stretch shame. for me. <laughs> Let's yeah. see. That's a short trip. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do anti research. Um, anything? I, I mean, for me, it was, it was. It was, I was, uh, besides, I'm going to say that over and over again. It was such an, a master class of acting um, to be with um, Giovanni, <laughs> Giovanni, Marin, Giovanni and Marin. No. Um, <laughs> the ones who aren't here. Brian. No, it, uh, to be with these guys uh, every day has been. I mean, truly, I'll never have another job like this. Um, it's, it's honestly, I've learned more than I can. I can't even say research, because I feel like I, I sort of learned how to act um, from these guys. We, all, we, li- live we all live together in Los Angeles. Not now. like hypothetically, <laughs> metaphorically. Like I was in one room, <laughs> and Margo was in the other room. <laughs> If you look in the and same Peter apartment, was the and, story and of Peter was, was below down the hall, and Lee Bay was right down the road. Right. So we all lived together. But we first started living in a place called the prison, <laughs> that we called the prison. That was a horror show. I said, just come over to the prison, and, and we'll right. work on this. Uh, we did a lot, did a lot of like early readings and rehearsals amongst ourselves at the prison. In the prison. Was, yeah. You didn't want to walk out in the corridors at nighttime. <laughs> yeah, I got really a call didn't. from Margo. It's like, the lights and the power are all off in the prison. <laughs> and they closed those security doors. I mean, what? What? I was like, do you want me to come over? I don't know. I think me and Peter, I'm barefoot, but I think we're going to the hotel. <laughs> and then, I mean, it was scary. Yeah, it was scary. Well, this is way too ridiculous to talk about. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, then, so then we finally <laughs> moved to so acting. a place called La L- 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 Stancia. Yeah. Which was really, <laughs> was really great. <laughs> was and for ridiculous. weeks, we never could, we just couldn't. We're going to let you it in It was in our this. body. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we've all become Peter Garrity. Yeah. 
And we. Yeah. I think that's we, what's happened. We uh, oh yeah. So what were you saying? No, no. We're here for you guys. I was just going to ask. W- did was this a product of the show moving from New York to LA because yes. you switched where you were filming, yeah. and then how how did that move affect you guys as actors? Was there anything that it really shifted and changed for any of you? We hated it. <laughs> we we, di- we didn't want to go at first, uh, but it it all, it just brought us. We just a tighter group, That's true. and it really really benefited the show. I yeah. think. Yeah, we had to overcome a lot of, um, you know, obstacles. Obstacles in the prison, particularly. Well, <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, this ensemble. I don't know if it's because it's a it has a you know a very theater sort of background for a lot of the actors, but it, we really, truly, as you can tell from how annoying we probably are in question and answers, we really became a a family. Um, so research, for instance, being a, uh, and you you can see it in season three. Like we have a dynamic that it's actually true. It's cause like you know Margot's mad at me cause I didn't wash the dishes or she thinks I lost some glasses, which is a whole nother thing. And he steals spoons, and but sh- <laughs> shit like that. But but it, it comes across on screen. I think I think when I was watching this season. We really do seem like a family, and I think I think we, f- if I do say so myself, uh, and I think we, that's because we sort of became one, and part of that was because we had to move to L.A. and we and we were all there together. We ate together, you know. We cooked. We did all that. It sounds like I drank, and everybody sickness. else didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we were like recalcitrant children. <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know. Sure. Just say yes. So <laughs> half the fun f- as an audience member watching the show is trying to figure out what the con is. And this season especially, there's multiple cons happening. And you guys all kind of get to go in on it together as a family. When you're reading the scripts, do you get all the scripts at once? And are you really trying to, <laughs> are you trying to figure that out as well? We're trying to figure out what the cons are. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, We don't know. Even uh, after the fact, we don't know. <laughs> Even after the, no, no, no. No. We do too. No. Well, you don't. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My process has to do with trying to justify who I am. No. Like As a person. As a person. <laughs> right. As a limping old person. Well, Peter Garrity, there is, um, there is, okay, I'm just going to tell a little bit of a little ad for Peter Garrity, if that's okay. It's going to be fast. I'll do the fast version. So there's a bunch of actors in the world who you watch, and, and you watch them, and you think, man, that so-and-so, that is a, an amazing actor. That is a phenomenal actor. And then there are, <laughs> well, <laughs> but then there are, there are a, a very, very few people that you'll watch them, and you think, God, I love my mom. God, I, 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 gotta, I love my dad. And, and you don't realize it until, you, until it's happened a few times because we're all so self-centered that you give yourself the credit for having those feelings. And you think it's coincidence that you were watching Peter. And then after about the third or fourth time, you go, wait a second. This guy is doing something, and that's the that's what I think I aspire to be, one day. Um, I have don't tell him I said this. And I I, I thought I had the corner on natural <laughs> until I met Peter and worked <laughs> with Peter. It's true. I think he's wow. incredible. Would you? You like didn't ask expect us, us to be nice to you. <laughs> Or anybody I wanted to ask you a question, Libe, about your character, because one of the things I think that was really exciting about Carly this season is th- it's kind of the first time we actually get to see her as a teenager. Um, so kind of how you've navigated playing a character that is this young teenager, but that we don't really necessarily see in that light because of the life that she's had to live. Yeah, um, I mean, it was, it's, it was really fun. And also, I mean, tacking on to the acting masterclass thing, I actually think it was such a gift to, in the first couple seasons, like come in a little bit and have and have the life just exist with the family. Cause it's like, I got to come in and have these like masterclasses with like doing a scene with Margo, doing a scene with Peter and others. <laughs> 
<laughs> doing a scene with Shane and ever and you know and I think like getting to do come in for like pieces um, and like really work hard on these like two scenes here and there or whatever per episode and so this season when Carly's life got much more flushed out and I was much more a part of the action it's like I had I had so many tools that I had learned from these guys like a few in the over the last couple of years so that was really awesome and a big gift you see, you see much more of the family in in this season mm -hmm. and uh, and the family together the family working together it's uh, it's very satisfying. There's a moment in the third season where um, it's just a little moment where uh, you you say um, I say let's get out of here, and you say where are we going, and I say anywhere you want, babe. That just knocks me out. Yeah. I know, it knocked me out. You know, and it's <laughs> it, it's such a little it's such a little thing. But it knocks you out because for two seasons you've had, and mind you, the two seasons that you watch of Sneaky Pete all take place in the space of like a week. 12 days, nine days. 12 days, like nine days. The, you know, cops get killed and <laughs> cars. Give away too much. You know, huh? I'm just kidding. I said, don't give away everything. No. Well, season I I hope season, season one, I ended up otherwise I'd be very man. confused tonight. Yeah, it all happens within five minutes or a couple of days yeah. or, 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 or something like that. And there's so much tension and there's so much like, God, why the hell did you do that? You big lug. Big dumb lug. Big dumb lug. Right. You know, so that when, when there's a moment, I mean, just selfishly for myself anyway, where there's a moment where I say, let's get out of here. And she says, where are we going to go? And I say, anywhere you want, babe. It tears me up. Mm -hmm. It just is like, it's like the sweetest love letter that you could say to someone in tiny little words that are could go over your head if you didn't listen to them. Okay, I'm through. <laughs> well, to your point of talking about how you guys really had to fight for your characters and you fought for certain elements within the story, um, I know that you had a new showrunner this season, so I'm really curious how that played out because obviously a new showrunner coming in is taking the lead, but you guys know these characters better than anyone at this point, but they also are coming in with fresh eyes and a fresh perspective, so how is navigating all of that? It, it, it would be hard for anyone. Yeah. And we do know more about these people than anyone else uh, because we actually did the pilot four years ago. So we've been living with these people for four years. And so having someone new, I mean, even if they know everything about us, we're going to be snotty about it, you know? And we're going to say, no, you didn't get that. I mean, this is where we're coming from. Don't you know how many more days, you know how many days that was? You know how many, when this happened? And this, this is how many days after that. Do you know how many days? Because we do. <laughs> and, and, you know, that, but that would have been for anyone new. Yeah. Anyone new. And also something that it did add to is I remember before we started, we did have a lot of conversations. We each went into the writer's room and had meetings with them, and they asked what we wanted to get out of it and what we wanted and where we saw our characters going and whatnot. And they did actually put a lot of that in the show. Like they Marin's did. arrest was her idea. And um, yeah, there was, and I was like, I want to see Who's idea, Jamie's? Whose idea? Marin's. Marin. <laughs> oh, Marin. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and and then I was like, I'm really curious to see Carly in like a situation with the love interest. I suggested a girl, but they were at a boy. But anyway, that's a side note. I was like, <laughs> I want to uh, <laughs> sleep with grandpas. Whoops, you guys haven't gotten there yet. But, um, <laughs> but I was gonna say one thing that uh, the uh, Blake and all the the writers did was they really, you know, we were we were all like kind of chomping at the bit and they were so successful. I mean, you see it in this first, you will not see very many uh, television scenes like you see at the end with uh, Margot and Marin in that fight. That's, that's something you don't, you don't get to do very often on television. And they put us throughout the season in those, you know, they let us go head to head and really Almost, almost in like a theatrical play kind of way, <laughs> just kind of 
step back and um, they were great about that and they they really let us I think they really listened to us and I think right. they tried to do everything they could to make us happy mm -hmm. and we were real snots <laughs> <laughs> and, we were I, in and the I, I apologize <laughs> I do I really do I, I, I and I apologize to them many times and saying I know you I know you we everybody really wanted to make everything as good as it could be but but in watching in watching it, I was very impressed with a lot of the writing and a lot. Of I the was writing. too, and, Peter. Very. And we and and some of that shit we just fought. And we might have been wrong. Might have been wrong. <laughs> How do you do that? And I think it really well, shows. Oh. You can see it in the relationship with the family. Look um, down. Look. Sorry. I just wanted to move on to a few questions that we had from the audience. Um, and this oh, one... Good, good. <laughs> That's why I was waiting for audience questions. <laughs> this one is to all of you um, about whether you still study acting and why. And actually, one of our members, Stephen, has taken classes with you, Shane, and Lupe. I don't know where you... So... <laughs> right here. Yeah. So I was curious, like, what it is that makes you want to keep studying, because I think not everyone does that once they start becoming successful enough and paying the bills. But what is it that that still gives you in terms of the tools that you're leaning on for these characters? I, 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 I. You study, Peter? <laughs> you I started in this business in 1953. How's that for you? In Provincetown Playhouse. And I, and I went for, and my sister said, you're gonna study, you're gonna, that was sucked. She said that was that nothing. Was, that was she was terrible. Like an she actress. said she, she wasn't a, brilliant a farmer. Actress. She was a brilliant actress. I mean, not there's anything and, I'm from. And and I was from. in Pygmalion, and she said, "You want the truth?" I said, "Of course." And she said, "It really was bad. It was really <laughs> bad. You know, if you're going to be in this business, you got to get yourself to New York and and have some studying." So I went and studied with Herbert Berghoff. Now this is back in 1962 or something like that, and I studied with him for six months, and then I never studied again until. A couple of years ago, when I studied with Lloyd Richards, but, but um, yeah. it was very interesting. After like three decades or four decades or however long that was, to go into an acting class with a brilliant teacher, and and do stuff with him or have him critique you when you had been doing it for such a long time, ninety percent of it on the stage. And and you know Shakespeare and all that stuff, and have him like shake you up, and have him, you know, ha check your boundaries and check your uh, assumptions about what you do when you walk onto a stage or what you do when you're in front of a camera is really hard, mm -hmm. hard for me. Anyway, walking on a stage is like mother's milk, but uh, it was really really interesting to study with someone after many years of doing it and and question your own uh, approach. I don't know, I found it really exciting. For me, I, Steve and I are in that, we take from an, a guy named Alan Savage, who is a, a character, and I, I love him dearly, and he, um, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of like the gym, or it's, it's, it's like anything, I, I, I can think that I have it down, um, and then I walk into Alan's class, and he quickly lets me know that I don't. The first time I ever did anything for him, I had done a couple of series and thought I was hot shit. I'd just gotten through the off-Broadway play, and I got a callback for some glass menagerie that was happening. I brought it in, and I did it, and he looked down and looked up. Just like chewing oatmeal or something. <laughs> Like I am sitting here thinking, why that was so bad? <laughs> Trying to, it's like okay, and that was eleven years ago. And um, so for me, it's just constantly being able to. It never gets. And the, if you're if you're pain. Doing, yeah, if you're if you're doing that every week. Also, I I think that when you get on set, you you don't even realize it, but it, everything is easier, and and just that constant. Mm -hmm. Bat, you know, that constant getting up in front of somebody. Using an acting class, the benefit for me of 
being in acting class has been like really to just get to like play in these worlds freely without context and strings of careers you know like right. there is no the only thing at stake is how much i grow as an actor and that's been the value for me um, falling in love with the if i you know if i was 22 again i mean i'm 28 now so yeah. it's <laughs> um <laughs> I would go back and yeah. just yeah. tell my, you know, you get in, if you could just, if I could have fallen in love with sort of just the actual craft and the process, the, just like the grindstone of it, and just put all the other crap out of your head, that's the, the thing that, you know, uh, I would try to convince myself six years ago, 22. I really appreciate when an acting teacher... Take a lock. Yeah. Look down. Look up. Look up. <laughs> okay. And that's I a perfect note. I to really appreciate You're going to go on. She's trying to wrap it up. You're going on? No, I'm going on. <laughs> I want oh some more audience God. on the question. Who the hell asked that question? Where are you? Is my, the question. It was supposed to be what? <laughs> we only had time for one audience question. Is that what happened? Yeah. Cool, cool. I well, wish we had time for more, but unfortunately, I know you guys have another event I, to I, get to. I, you today. know, my answer is that I, I study everybody I'm working with, and I steal from everybody I'm working with. I'm telling you, I've been working with Lois Smith, and I told her I'm stealing every damn thing she's doing. I mean, that's my world now. Um, um, I studied for years, and I did, did it for years. And I, when I would go into acting class, I would tell them I'd never acted before so that I could learn how to do it, even if I'd done it a million times. That's incredible. Well, thank you so much for sharing the show with us tonight. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I hope, thank you, guys. I hope you guys liked it, because we love it.